Hey fellow writers, today in this video we're going to talk about the joy of first pages. We're going to be looking at some scripts, we're going to be going through some examples and talking about the importance of those pages. So, this is all for educational purposes only. We're here to teach you, so let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. As I said off the start, today we are talking about your first pages, which is essentially your opening into your world and your script. Those first pages of your script, whether it's one or three or five or ten, that's taking us into this world that you are creating. You are setting the tone, you are letting us know what to expect, you are setting up your characters, you are making us feel comfortable. Your first page specifically should grab us by the throat and pull us forward and make us want more. Your opening image is very important. You can't choose it lightly. You need to be very careful in what you put out there is the first thing we see, which character we see, whether it's a present time or a backstory shot. Maybe it's a future shot where we're gonna jump back in time to see the rest of the movie. Whatever it is that you're going to put together, you want to make sure that you are putting in a lot of intention in there. We're going to look at a few different first pages here and we're going to play with them a little bit. We're going to go through them and note what really works and what really grabs our attention. I want you to really put on your analysis type of hat where you can look at a script and really break down what's working and why it's working. And you'll notice that everybody chooses a little bit different way of formatting. You want to look at every script you can and especially those first pages and grab from there what you can to enhance your skill set. Look at the imagery, look at the visual, look at the cinematic way that these things are put together. You need to do that in your first page. If you can grab someone on that first page and make them feel confident in you as a writer and how you're going to take them somewhere, you're going to be set. Of course, you have to keep it up as you go through. And I'm not saying that page one is the end all and be all. It's the whole screenplay that has to work. But having that first page, that first opening image, be the right kind to set things in motion, to ground us with a character, to let us know what that entire movie is about if you have the opportunity to do so, it'll really work well. So let's look at the King of Staten Island first so you can see what I'm talking about. So the first thing to keep in mind is that this is clearly a shooting script. You could have a title sequence listed in your script or not. That's your choice. But let's look at this first scene here. So we open in exterior road afternoon. Scott Carlin is driving. No character information, most likely because this was already set up on how this movie was going to take place, who was starring in it, etc. But look at this. Scott Carlin, 24, is driving. He's visibly upset. He deliberately closes his eyes tightly and keeps driving. The sound of horns and swerving snap him out of it and he opens his eyes. He realizes he just nearly killed himself. Scott says, I'm sorry. It's a great opening image because it tells us so much about who this character is. He's 24 years old and he's just closed his eyes on what would probably be, be a busy road and he could have easily died and killed someone else and when he realizes it's over and it was a stupid mistake it says he's sorry it tells us so much about who this guy is what he's going through what he is dealing with his mental state how reckless he may be how unmotivated he is and how he just doesn't care about anything it's a great opening image on that first page it's a great character study of loss and mourning and grief and how it can really affect you for the long haul. And that one little image really does bring us in and let us know who this character is and why we should be paying attention. So let's switch gears and look at the Animal Kingdom pilot. I get so excited about this because I think it's a perfect example of how you grab your audience by the throat, how you pull them in to what you want them to see, and then you just don't let go. So let's break this one down a little bit. So we open in an apartment, right? Joshua J. Cody, 17, but could pass for older, important detail, because we need to know how 
we experience this young man. Sits on a worn couch watching a TV game show. His mom, Julia Cody, 30s. It's an important detail because of how young she would have been when she had him. Sits a few feet away. She seems to be asleep. Chin on her chest. Son angles in through the windows and onto a coffee table strewn with bills, old tabloids, junk food wrappers. Jay stares at the TV. It's a named babble filling the room as two paramedics with kit bags bang on the screen door. Jay lets them in. They go to Julia like they've been here before. Paramedic asks what she taken. Jay says heroin. The paramedic checks her pulse. The other injects her with Narcan. Jay watches, stealing looks back to, at the game show. A contestant wins big. The studio audience cheers. Colored lights begin to swirl and we hear bells and whistles. This is a great opening moment that just grabs us. Here's a young man. His mom is next to him on the couch. She's ODing right in front of him and she's probably dead. And he isn't really phased by it because it's normal life. This has clearly happened before. He's almost more interested in looking at the television than what's going on on the couch beside him. It tells us so much about him. It tells us how mature he must be, what he's gone through, how many things he's been affected by in his life. And we want to reach out and just hug this young guy. And here we'll just jump ahead. He leans against the sink, his mom's ancient pink Hello Kitty iPhone to his ear. A woman's voice picks up. Hello? Yes? It's Jay. Jay? Jay who? Josh. A beat the woman's voice fills with syrup. So that little bit of information there showcases who this woman is. She's hard. She's not interested. She's cold on the phone until she realizes who this guy is. But just by saying it's Jay, she has no clue what that means. This is her grandson, right? We will learn this at the top of the next page. But this is her grandson. She doesn't even know how he goes by, what name he goes by. He has to say Josh, then she realizes who it is and becomes the sweetest woman in the world, right? Her voice fills with syrup. Such a great way to use your words on the page. One thing that that page one really does well is shock us. You've got so many shocking things in such a little amount of time. You set up the main character, you set up the world of that character, and you let us know that we're going to have to move to a different world. And that's all happening in that first page. And it gets more and more interesting and intense as it goes on. But that first page really does invite us in and set that tone. Speaking of tone, the Joker, what a movie. It's such a great character study, such a great deep look into a descent into madness. And it really does keep us glued to that page. The first scene overall really does set everything up. And that whole scene doesn't take place over the first page, but there are a few key things that happen on that first page that do let us know what to expect and what to see coming around the bend and what exactly this character may all be about. In The Joker, I'm just going to look at the very beginning here. So over black, we hear laughter. The sound of a man totally cracking up. Totally cracking up. There's a difference between laughing and cracking up and totally cracking up. It's a great sound for us to fall in on over the black. And there's some interesting formatting here that really makes sense. Then we're close on Arthur, 30s. Tears in his eyes from laughing so hard. We all know what it means to laugh that hard that you're crying, right? It's an important little detail. He's trying to get it under control. So here he is knowing he shouldn't be laughing that this isn't the situation for it, and he's trying hard to get it under control. His greasy black hair hanging down over his forehead. So he has greasy black hair, it's long, hanging down. That kind of tells us a lot about what a person's like, right? He's wearing an old, faded green cardigan sweater, a threadbare gray scarf, thin from years of use, hangs loosely around his neck. One five-line paragraph that tells us pretty much everything we need to know about this guy. His hair's greasy, He's got old, faded, threadbare clothes, thin from years of use, and it hangs loosely around his neck. He doesn't really care about himself. He doesn't hold himself in high regard. Then we see that he's sitting across from an overworked social worker, African-American. Her office is cramped and run down in a cramped and run down building. What a beautiful sentence. Stacks of folders piled high in front of her. 
we feel for this lady. She's clearly overworked. It tells us she's overworked, but it shows us, which is more important. The, the stacks of folders on her desk, the cramped and run down office in a cramped and run down building. It's just hammering it to us that we are in a very dark place. We are in a very limited resource area. She just sits behind her desk waiting for the laughing fit to end. She's been through this before. Finally, it subsides. Now, some people may not use that it's she's that she's been through this before. Because as she's sitting there waiting for him to stop, I assume she's been through that before. But that's a personal choice. You're trying to speak to us a little bit, let us know what someone is thinking, but also how they hold themselves, the look on her face, the annoyance that we would feel. Instead of saying she's waiting for his laughing fit to end, annoyed, it's she's been through this before. It gives us the same thing, but in a more lyrical way. Arthur takes a deep breath, pauses to see if it's over. A beat. Arthur finally speaks. Is it just me or is it getting crazier out there? That's a perfect opening line to the script because that's what this is all about. The entire movie is about how crazy things are. Not just for this guy and inside and what he's going through, but the whole city is going crazy. There's this garbage packing up everywhere because there's garbage strikes. There's anarchy happening. People are looking for someone to rise up and fight this system with them. It's getting crazier and every single scene gets crazier and crazier and crazier over the course of this movie. It's a great entrance into this world and it only gets better as you get through this scene because it defines who this character is, what he's all about, and what we can expect to see coming. It draws us in. It makes us ask questions. It has us wondering so many things about this one character and how he's going to take us down that dark road. And of course, it's a previous IP. It's based on a character we all know well. It's an origin story in a different way, which was a brilliant departure from a lot of the things that we had been seeing. But if it was a spec script that went out and we didn't know that was the Joker, we would sit there and we would soak in what is there. We would feel for that character. We would emotionally ground in to what's going on in that moment. As a writer trying to break in to the system, you have to make your script as attractive as possible. You want to give that reader no opportunity to put your script down. You want to be creating momentum from scene to scene, from page to page, but from line to line on the first page of your script. And as you saw in the other examples, everyone's got their own kind of style. There's either a lot of white space on the page, or it's a little cramped with text, or it's a mixture of both. I'm gonna show you the first page of my script, Incision. It's one of my favorite opening sequences. I get a thrill out of it, uh, and you'll see that I'm really trying to play with imagery there and set up what's to come, create a bit of a mystery, create some suspense, set the tone of what we're looking at, as well as ground the entire catalyst of this story in one page. So let's take a look at that. So let's just go through the first page that I wrote to show how it's possible to really grab someone and make them turn that page. Fade in, exterior, highway night. I, you don't have to use fade in, I'm old school, I just love still using it. A flattened raccoon, his chest bore open by an owl that rips at his innards. So I wanted to have kind of a stark image because it defines what this movie's about. It's about getting in a cadaver and digging it open. The owl suddenly rotates its head. Its large eyes reflect headlights that swiftly grow inside as a vehicle rapidly approaches. The owl takes flight smash. A light sedan smears the raccoon carcass to pulp as it flies at over 100 miles per hour. So it's filling us with intensity. Something's going on. This car's flying somewhere. Its taillights quickly become a blur. Whoosh! A dark sedan makes good time as it closes the gap on its scurrying prey. We move inside the car. The driver, bald head dripping, sweaty as all hell, darts his manic eyes back and forth from rear view to road. I'm trying to show that this guy is nervous. He knows something's following him. He's trying to get away from it. His gut wrenches. He bucks forward, rubs his eyes a little too hard. Wham! The chase car rams the back end, 
cannons the light sedan forward, driver struggles to retain control. So we can tell here that the guy's gut is wrenching, he's buckling forward, there's something going on, there's something wrong with this guy. Then we're back out on the street, street lights illuminate the chase as it barrels into a more populated area. Back in the sedan, and you'll see, I'm not using day or night or continuous or same time, I'm trying to just punch, 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 punch to make you feel the intensity of what's happening as we're just moving at a quick fire pace. It's a choice. Back in the sedan, driver pitches forward into the steering wheel with a groan, loses control, wretches, about to vomit as he careens toward a vacated bus stop. Then we cut to outside, wa-boom, the light sedan disintegrates the bus stop, shattered glass, mangled metal, and sparks fly. So that's the end of the first page. And most of the feedback I get from this is how that scene really pulls them in, really makes an impact, really makes them want to know what is going to be next, what's going to happen to that car, who's chasing, who's driving, why is he sick, what do they want, what are they after. It's not a perfect page. I'm not here to pat myself on the back. I'm just trying to show you how you can use your page in a way that really does pull the eye down. I have a style where I use a lot of the double dashes. I use capitals uh, when I want impact felt. And I just want to pull an eye down that page as fast as possible. I just wanted to show you an example of what different kinds of scripts look like, whether they are spec scripts, whether they are on assignment, whether they are built within a system. Everything is gonna be a little different depending on who's writing it, what it's being written for, and where in the process that it is. Now, no writing is perfect. Everyone has their own style, everyone has their own voice, or at least they should. But look at your first pages, at all alone, by itself, one page, and ask yourself if at the end of that page, there's anything stopping that person from flipping to the next one. Are you creating that momentum? Are you setting things up in a way that gets us to that bottom and that line is forcing us to turn that page? Use your page space wisely. If you have a great line of dialogue or a great action or piece of description that is exciting and tangible and interesting, is that gonna make us turn that page? Reformat your pages, play with your space if that line doesn't quite land there. If it's the line that's going to do the best job of forcing someone to have no choice but to turn that page, but it happens at the top of the second page, rework your writing. Get it to the bottom of that first page. You are playing a trick on that reader. You are getting into their subconscious and they are flipping that page before they even know that it's happened. And if you can continue to do that from page to page to page, that person will get to the end of the script without even realizing they were turning pages. Put a lot of weight into the thoughts on that opening image, on that first page, on that scene that we begin our journey in. First pages are important. They set everything into motion. Do some research yourself. Look up any script that you love. Look at all of the Oscar nominated scripts. They're easy to find online. They're up for consideration. They will stay there and you'll be able to find them. Look at them and ask yourself what that first page does. Some of those first pages may not grab you. Ask yourself why. Ask yourself if it's important or not. Ask yourself what is happening in that scene that really does set things up to make you want to get to the next page. If you can write a great first page, they're flipping. They're already moving forward. So don't allow them the opportunity to be underwhelmed when they go into your script. Not every first page looks the same. You can see that in all of these examples. But what happens on those pages is they all have something there that is interesting and engaging, that is introducing us to specific characters, that lets us know the world we are in and why we need to be there. It's all in those pages, so make yours just as great. We love doing these videos for you and we're happy to do them for you. If you like what you're seeing, hit the subscribe button, click on that alert so you can find out when we've got new stuff happening, new videos hitting our channel. You can click up on past videos here, get some other links, see more of what we're doing because we are here as a goal to help you get better with every page. 
That's what we want to do. So get better with every page, read those screenplays, and until next time, write hard. Mm -hmm.